Although it's hard to believe from the mess behind me, a few days ago I was tidying the place up. One of the items of junk found was this hand cranked torch. The idea is you'd crank the handle and charge up the battery, so you'd have some light if the power went off. That's in theory, but in practice it wasn't so good. You'd be turning the handle and still there'd be almost no charge. The light would come on for about a minute or so and that was about it. Even when I read a book, cranking for ages and ages, it was still no better. Even if it was no good as a torch, there was a possible use for it. The LEDs were still bright and could be used in other projects. And the generator, well that certainly had potential. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull it apart and let's see what we can do with it. The generator is down on the left. In the middle is a battery. Now it looks suspiciously like a CR2032, the sort of battery that you might get in things like car remote controls. Although, looking at the print on the battery, it does say lithium iron rechargeable battery, LIR2032, 3.6 volts. Then there's a switch and the LEDs, three LEDs plus a reflector. Having a look inside, we have the gear mechanism and the generator. It actually looks quite solidly built. There are several things I could do with it. First of all, I think it would be worthwhile to see what sort of voltage and current this generator really gives. Luckily, there are already two little holes in the box, so I use them to pass wire from the generator to outside the unit. I've also unsoldered the other connection to the torch is completely out of the circuit. Now we're going to test it. Strip two ends of the wire, put them in your mouth and give it a crank. Yeah, it certainly does give you a jolt. 18.2 volts. Almost ripping the handle off but we're up to over 22 volts. Of course 20 volts on the meter is good but what you really want to know is how much power you're getting. Because 20 volts and a few milliamps is not very useful at all. I need to think a bit about the current. 12 volts, 12 ohms is 1 amp. This thing's certainly not going to give you that. So we'll go for a higher resistance, say around 120 ohms. I've now got three resistors. 270 ohm, 150 ohm and 12 ohm. That should be a good range to do these experiments. Well, with 270 ohm, we're getting around 13.8 or 14 volts. If I crank really quick, it can get to over 16. Even after a few seconds winding, this half watt resistor is too hot to touch. So, we know this thing really is putting out appreciable power. Next, the 150 ohm resistor. And it's hot as well. It may be a bit hard to see, but that's a 12 ohm resistor and the real test of the generator. They're cranking it hard. Just made six. Faster. Oh, we can just get it over seven. But we're going to wreck the motor. There's a smell in the air. The resistor is cooked. After that cooking experiment, this place stinks. Time to open some windows. But the experiment was successful that you could generate appreciable amounts of current with a generator in a cheap wind-up torch. But just going back to the calculations, 6 volts across 12 ohms is half an amp, 500 milliamps. Not bad for a cheap little toy. In practice though, you probably wouldn't be cranking that vigorously. And the real amount of power that something like this could put out would be more in the range of 100 to 300 milliamps. Still, that's useful to power other things. I deliberately did this experiment on the floor to show that you can do a lot of stuff in electronics even without a workshop. There's only one rule and that is don't tread on anything. 